Well, hi. So we're starting a new one, and I'm going to put the video out before you ever get your stuff in the mail. I'm still waiting on my uh, emergency, well, my emergency supplies for my, for my printer. So uh, here's what we're going to be doing. We're painting, we're going to paint these irises. Uh, I have got the tracing here and I have started drawing where I'm going to put masking. I have done this one and now I'm going to talk about what I'm doing here while I'm doing this one. Uh, you will see when you look at this that there is kind of a light edge on this ruffle and part of it is you know on these is is fairly dark but we're going to go ahead and or I suggest going ahead and masking those areas because it's it's hard to get the pop back in them we can we can very easily tint them after at the end of this so I want to mask those now, I had debated whether to mask these little dealies right here. And what it comes down to is that when I, um, I did a little test thing where I was trying to put, where I was putting white over the purple, and I just felt like the look was not satisfactory. Of course, this is just a big blob of paint. It's not the little lines. But uh, it didn't work very well for me. So... As much as I hate to, I think we need to mask these. The reason I hate to have you mask these little fine lines is that a lot of the time people don't get little fine lines. They get careless blobs. And so I'm going to kind of go over with you how to do this successfully. First of all, I'll draw these in lightly. And you just want to get the basically the um, spirit of the thing. You don't have to get every one of these shapes in just right. The little thinnest shapes, I'm just making a line for them. And part of the reasoning on this is that when you um, pull the masking up, the pencil line will come up with it. There won't be any bit of pencil line left there. So if you just straddle that little mark that you've made, It'll, it'll totally go away anyway. You don't need to put as many lines as are in this, uh, in the iris. You could, you can kind of uh, cull some of those out if you wanted to. Okay, so I'm gonna draw some right here. And I'm drawing lightly, but I'm drawing it strong enough that I can see it. And uh, even some of these traced lines that are a real problem to erase them if you decide you want to get rid of them. It suddenly occurred to me that one way to get rid of them is to, instead of trying to erase them, is to apply masking on top of them, let it dry, and then pull it up. You probably get rid of most or maybe even all of it. So that's a tip for future stuff. Okay. So I'll do this later. You don't have to watch me do all that, but you can see that I have a little, I hope it shows up. You can see that I have a little ruffle. Let me look and see if that shows up. Yes, it does. Okay, so um, you can see that I have a little ruffle around part of the edge, but not every bit of the edge. Some places have a ruffle and some don't. Um, and like I said, I'll do this petal later. We have one petal here that is not dropped down yet. This one is just opening up. So you have a, a, a purple here. Now what we're looking for on this, there's not any white whites or very few areas that look really white. They're almost white. We're looking for the lightest pinks. So this area right in here, okay, what, let's, let's do this. Let's just lay this right next to here. Let's look at this area first. 
this thing is very light. See this? And I could come down and make a shape like that. Actually, there's a little darker area in the middle of that. Here's the thing. This is an arbitrary decision. I want a certain amount of white in here to make the painting pop. Uh, and the perfect accuracy, or which ones you choose, you may choose different areas than I do, uh, it won't hurt anything. You're not going to make some awful mistake just because you didn't do the exact same thing that I did. Yours might turn out better. Let's see, let's put a few little thingies in there. We'll leave that all light. I may actually have to kind of concentrate when I go back. I'll have to look that I fill in the big white shape and not the little shapes. Um, so, you, you can remember from Iris's last year that we had to concentrate a lot. Right in here is a shadow, I think. I don't know what it is, but we're going to put that in. That comes along right there. So, of course, we're not masking the shadow. We're masking the area next to it. That looks like that, and then it's this part here. And then this little part has got a thing here. This could be exhausting, okay, for some of you. Don't, like, just don't overstress about it. Just do something and go with it. I, I'm, I'm not suggesting that you just take off and be totally sloppy with it, but I'm saying that uh, there's not anything to stress over either. This has got a, this area right here has got a very soft edge to it. Let's go right here. It's got a very soft edge to it, but I'm gonna turn that into a hard edge because if you use masking, you have a hard edge. It doesn't mean that you can't change that and soften that edge later, but you have a hard edge. So, oh, I don't know that that's all that light, but I'll do that, okay a thing there. So see, I've got areas that I'm going to mask. And, and then I'll put stuff on this big petal and this purple petal. But I'll do that later. I want to go ahead and talk about masking again. I'm going to try not to make it too long because I don't want it to get repetitious. Most of y'all have seen this. But I do have an extra wrinkle to add to it. So you do need to watch it. Okay, big squirt of dishwashing liquid and some water. Okay, that's probably enough. Again, it's not, uh, you don't need a measuring device. Something like that's close enough. And I'm gonna mix it up good. And I'm using my brush to mix it up well because I need to prime my brush with this liquid. Now this again is a synth totally synthetic brush that's got a nice point on it. And I'm squeezing it out so that I don't have extra soapy water left in it. But it does have this fine coating of soapy water that's going to help protect the brush. So let's go in here. This is my PBO masking fluid, which by the way Hobby Lobby is open now and they are carrying this. So, I'm going to fill this in. And you can paint for up to 20 seconds. Don't go longer than that. It's certainly fine to go less than that. And then you're gonna wash your brush out and you're gonna squeeze it off again. And you notice I'm not dipping it all the way down in the masking fluid because I don't want the masking fluid to soak up here into the ferrule. And it will kind of creep up the brush a ways. Okay, so let's put this on. PBO masking fluid. Hobby Lobby has it and they're open. There we 
There we go. A little more right here. Okay. So that, for instance, one more time. Wash it out. And see, when I wash it out, I am rubbing across the bottom of the container because, see, when you push against the container, I'm not jamming the end of my brush into the container. I'm doing it kind of sideways and pulling like that. So that really opens up the areas between the bristles and cleans them out. Okay. One last time with this one because I want to finish this spot while I got, got it in my sights here. Okay, that will do. And if I want to get rid of that dark line there, and I wouldn't mind getting rid of that. I've got my lines dark, so they'll show up on the video. But uh, if I want to get rid of that line, I just paint the masking fluid over it. And when I pull the masking fluid up later, I'll get rid of most of it. Now I'm washing my brush out again, of course, right away. And then wash it in clear water. And your brush is ready to put up. Now I have right here, again, this is another Hobby Lobby item. It's a Master's Touch. This is a one, number one script brush. That's what they call it there. Some people call them riggers or, um, oh, there's another name. I can't think of it. Okay, so I want that for these little fine areas down here. Now, it doesn't appear to have much of a point, but once I get it wet, it should do fine. Squeeze it out. Well, it's not in the best shape. Okay, again, here, I don't want to overload the brush. See, I don't want a big drip coming off of it, or even a little drip. I'm going to rake that just like that so that I can go over these little fine lines and keep a fine line. I'm not pressing very hard either because I don't want a big, fat, chunky line. I want it to look like one of these delicate little lines that are on the iris petal. You could, with the right brush, and that one's not in mint shape, but you could, with the right brush, uh, do cat whiskers that were very convincing. Uh, I have had people, though, mask whiskers that just were horrible because they were big, fat clunks because, in general, People that don't have much experience with masking fluid tend to underestimate how much impact this is going to have in the final product. Okay, you know, halfway down, rake it all the way to the tip so that I've got a nice little fine tip on there that doesn't have an extra drip to it. Now, as long as you have masking fluid on this, it's covered. By the way, I have a little trailer there. This, my masking fluid is pretty old. This is salvaged out of a big bottle and I put it in this little container, but I really need new masking fluid. I don't recommend buying large bottles of masking fluid. It, it ages, even if it doesn't dry up, it ages and coagulates. I even kept some in my refrigerator thinking that it wouldn't do that, but it did. And PBO is, does it just like the others. Okay, so you're going to do all of this masking. And I'm going to do all of this masking. And then we're going to come back and meet back up here. I have a little, a little piece that I worked on that is just testing colors and values. Uh, so you can see here where I have... The, where the masking has been pulled off. See, that really has a lot of impact. And we're going to use a really rich purple on these. I think this is really going to be a really nice project. Okay, I'll meet you back here in a few minutes. Okay. Your masking has dried. It feels sticky. Okay but it's been sitting here and it's dry. It has a little tackiness to it. So we've got our water out here. And paint, which has been pre-wet, so I can get enough color up. I, uh, on this piece, 
I use some uh, Quinn Rose along with Quinn Coral. Uh, I also happen to have uh, Quinn Pink, and I think that that would really be great here. If you happen to have Quinn Pink or Opera, use that. If not, Quinn Coral will do just great. Okay, that's Quinn Pink. That's way more than enough color. And let's get new gamboge. It's a Daniel Smith brand of new gamboge. Almost looks like an, it's an orange. It's just a really rich, transparent uh, yellow, warm yellow, reddish yellow. And let's use, let's play it safe here and let's use cerulean. So I've got fair, a fairly strong mixture of color here. Okay, wash that brush out, and here's some clean water. I'm going to pre-wet the whole thing. The thing, we're going to do a wet-in, wet wash here, but because we've got masking, we're holding out some very nice whites. Throwing a lot of water. I'm not overly concerned about getting it on here perfectly. I just want it to be really wet. This is the lubricant that lets the paint flow. Okay. That's good enough. And this is really wet. This is the kind of wet where it drips off the page. See that? Okay. So let's start out. Mm, let's start out with the pink. Let's look at the picture. Now we're not concerned with getting the dark purples in here or the dark greens. We're going to work with just a red, yellow, and a blue. And so we want some pink in these areas. And of course, the pink can also get on the uh, purple part of the iris, too. That would be no problem. Okay, and you can see it's so wet, it's flowing everywhere. There's a little dry spot. That'll be interesting. Now, while that's really wet, I can drop some of the concentrated yellow in here near the center. And see, this looks really strong right now. But as we continue working with it, it's gonna thin out. I'm gonna pull the pink on up into the top part of the iris. Well, that's pretty much already there. Okay, but you see, that's, 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 that's fairly strong looking. I don't want it dark everywhere, but I'll keep a little more pink down here towards the center of the iris. Now we're gonna put Oh, by the way, did I tell you to have saran wrap handy? You need to have it in the room with you. Ready to go. Okay. So we're going to... I, I don't care if I get the blue into the red. Now that some yellow is going to mix with my blue. It'll be okay. What I don't want to do is get all three colors in one spot. You can have blue and pink, yellow and pink, or even yellow and blue. And some of this is going to overlap. A little blue is going to get on the flower, some pink in the background. You know, all this kind of stuff is going to happen. In fact, I think I would like to splatter a little pink. I just now decided to do this. You know, sometimes you just got to let your intuition take over. It's just telling me that's what I should do. Okay, so now saran wrap. See, this is, this is a lesson where there's a lot of, uh, there was all that masking, which, you know, we rarely ever do much masking. 
So I'm afraid everybody may have old masks because we never use it up. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to scrunch my So see, this is gonna get a lot softer. Look how much softer the color looks already. Okay, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna just have some little broken up areas that's created by the saran wrap. And then what you need to do is go off and leave it for an hour or so. Don't try to speed this up or do anything to it. Don't lift it up to see how it's coming along. Oh my gosh, don't do that. Oh, looky. I didn't put any color down here. That's gonna be a bit of another iris. Cause I thought we needed a little extra spot. So, okay, here we have this. And that's it. I see I even left some, I've got some pops of white in there. Leave that, you know, don't go back and fix it. Don't pull them, don't, oh, just don't. Whatever you're thinking about doing to this, don't do it. Okay. So, that's all. I'm going to post this much. And uh, hopefully, I will have the lesson out to you in the mail pretty soon. But I, I do not have... Uh, normally, my uh, ink people would already have my cartridges here. I, I refill cartridges and one of my cartridges crashed on me, and I thought I had backups for that when that happens, but uh, I didn't have one of the colors, and it's um, I'm having to wait. So they're slow now because of, you know, viruses or something. Anyway, shipping is slow. So uh, hopefully very soon. I'll let y'all know when I'm going to mail them out. Okay. Bye.